Hi, my name is Sam, and today I'm going to be talking to you a bit about what our team has been doing using the Elastic Stack for machine learning monitoring in security. I'll tell you a little bit about what our team does at Elastic, how we've been using Elasticsearch in Kibana, and some of our future plans. Our team is approximately nine people now. We just had another person join us. And one of the people on this slide is actually from the data engineering team. I want to single out Jess here because she's been such a huge help. Um, our manager, Bobby, and then we've got several data scientists and myself and Ashton here who have been focused on machine learning up till now. As you know, Elastic has three main pillars, the search, observability, and security. We're here in the security part of the company. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about a model that we use to detect malware. So for those of you who are not security people, malware is a large range of different kinds of things, all of which are designed to disrupt normal functioning of your computer, steal your information, maybe steal other people's information, and we identify malware using an approach called static analysis that collects information from files without us having to actually run the malware. Some of the kinds of things we can detect include adware, trojans, bots, other kinds of things. And the malware product that we work on originated with a startup called Endgame that was acquired by Elastic about two years ago. And it's, the new product is called Endpoint. The gist of how this type of endpoint detection works is that it runs on your computer all the time in the background. Anytime you download a file or click on something from the internet that tries to download a file, it performs this static analysis. And if we determine that it looks like malware, the file will be quarantined. And we're all very familiar with quarantine after the last couple of years with COVID. So if you think that file is not malware, you'd have to manually intervene to get it out of jail. Otherwise, you've now been protected from something that was trying to disrupt your system. The model that runs in the background on the malware detection product is machine learning. It was originally created by a previous team member, Mr. Phil Roth, in response to a Kaggle competition. It was a gradient boosted decision tree on a relatively small data set. And we've now, over time, it has grown to use much larger data. And um, we're in the process of productionizing this a bit more. So this gives you an overview of the current setup. The feature vectors, third party data, which includes um, a couple of companies that aggregate vendor responses to known malware, as well as internal metadata, which mostly consists of tags. All of that gets combined into essentially a feature engineering step that feeds into our model training. When we train the model, we write the results out to Elasticsearch. We then run a prediction step on samples that the model has not seen. We write those results out to Elasticsearch. And then when the model is running in production, we evaluate it using Elasticsearch. So Elasticsearch is pretty central to our model lifecycle. And we're also making use of Elasticsearch observability products. We're in the process of integrating increasing amounts of these features, but right now we use monitoring which is a way of saying logs and other things. And in particular, we use a lot of telemetry, which is a subset of monitoring. And this is very important for us because it tells us how the product is working on a customer's machine. So every time the model flags a file as malware, we get a message from telemetry. And this is really important for us to be able to improve model performance over time. To give you an overview of how the process actually looks right now, if you've never trained a machine learning model, 
or you're curious about how we do it. We get the input data from S3. We train on a subset of data. At the moment, it's 160 million samples of what we think includes a lot of malware, some unknowns, and some known benign samples. This all happens in AWS on EC2. We run a prediction step on a much larger data set, and we insert all of those results into Elasticsearch. We evaluate the release candidate, partly using Elasticsearch monitoring, and I'll show you some of that on the next few slides. And then we have a publishing step that packages up the model artifacts. Once the models are pushed out to all of our customers' machines, we continue to monitor and evaluate a performance using telemetry, again, in Elasticsearch. So here's an example of how we are comparing existing models with old models. And if you're not familiar with this terminology, I'm going to run through it real quickly. So when we're evaluating how well a model performs, we look at the true positive rates, how effectively it's identifying malware, as well as the true negative rates, how effectively it's identifying benign samples. And we want to maximize both the red and green true positive, true negatives up here. And we want to minimize the number of false positives and false negatives. Obviously, we don't want to let any malware through. So we'd like a really low false negative rate. And we'd really like to avoid annoying our customers with unnecessary alarms and quarantines with false positives. So we make sure to be extra careful that we don't have a high false positive rate. And you can see on here that these this top line is the green true negative rate. And that means that we have really good identification of benign samples. And then down here at a mere 99%, we have um, our true positive rate. So we're doing pretty well here. This is based on actual real world data. So this is how our model is performing in real life. And this top line here is the most recent model version. You can see very clearly that it's performing better than the two previous ones in the, the two lines below it. So we continue to get better day by day. We also evaluate how the model's doing based on other views of telemetry. And this is just a screenshot of a much larger dashboard showing how we use Kibana. And this is particularly using Lens to let us compare different data sets in a single Elasticsearch cluster, as well as across different clusters. So in this case, we're looking at things like whether we set the threshold for what we consider malware correctly. We're comparing our diagnostic release with our production release to make sure that the majority of alerts we're seeing are from diagnostic models where we expect to see lots of telemetry and that we don't see too many alerts from production customers. Um, and then we do a variety of comparisons and looking at, again, how the model is doing over different versions over time. We also take advantage of Slack alerts. So we have anomaly detection jobs, which I'll talk more about in a second. And we also have um, ways of checking whether, for example, this service that we use, it's a web service. If that goes down, we'll get an alert after a internal user has attempted to try to use the service. If it isn't working correctly, eventually it will send us a message in Slack and let us know. The anomaly detection jobs, we have a couple of them that let us know if we get a very large volume of telemetry unexpectedly. So if we see a really large spike, that means something's probably wrong. The anomaly detection job will let us know with an alert in Slack. And you can click on this link to see a dashboard. This is what that dashboard looks like. So this screenshot is from back in October. These are dates along this line here. And then the colors indicate how severe it is, essentially. So this orange bar here indicates that this was a higher than average increase in alerts. And that let us know that something was looking a little bit fishy. So as we're improving our model pipelines and productionizing more and more of this, we're looking at how we can have Elasticsearch essentially in the center of this whole process. 
So we've got our third party data coming in here, getting processed by the data engineering team. Our tags have now all been moved into S3 and we have telemetry coming in. We're gonna put everything in an Elasticsearch cluster. The schema is something we are currently finalizing and we're planning to use Elon, which is a Python library that makes it easy to interoperate with pandas, which is another Python library that we use a lot in data science. So we're pretty excited about this because it's going to make it much easier to store and retrieve version data with timestamps on it. So Eland, I mentioned, if you haven't checked it out, it's pretty powerful. Um, we recently decided that rather than doing one big index, we're going to do several small indices. And that will be much easier to manage updates and versioning on, and then we'll be able to combine those indices using the transform feature. We're in the process of integrating APM into our new labeling service, and that will make it much easier for us to track how well that's working as a REST API. And we're going to move everything into ECS logging and collect those logs with FileBeat. Since we plan to have all of our models living on Kubernetes, this should make that much easier. In the long term, our goal is to make it much easier for anyone on the team to query Elasticsearch for any data they would want and then generate a model using that data, the results of the query. And then we can update new indices with the outputs of the model and create dashboards, kind of like we're doing now, but we'd like to speed up this whole cycle and make it much easier for everyone on the team to use it. We're also really looking forward to some new features that are coming. We're gonna have a lot more telemetry data and it's gonna be really powerful for us to be able to get more insights into how well the model is working. And very importantly, we're gonna be getting more information from unknown malware samples. So malware where we may not have any third party data to work off of, or that doesn't necessarily look that similar to other samples that we've seen. There's also going to be new support for PyTorch in the StackML product, as well as support for NLP models, which will be useful for us. And it's pretty exciting to see more of that getting integrated. And I don't have time today, but if you're interested in what else our team does with StackML, you should check out the Elastic blog. We've got some pretty interesting stories about things we've done with DGA and with living off the land attacks for people who are in security and interested in that sort of thing. I wanna thank our team, especially Ashton, who's worked really closely with me on all these projects and Bobby, our manager. Apoorva, who explained all of the transform stuff and helped me set up the anomaly detection jobs. Andrew contributed the slide on data drift, so thank him for that. Um, I already mentioned Jessica David, who has been instrumental in making sure that we have a working Elasticsearch cluster and that everybody has access to it. The rest of the data engineering team, Mark Dufresne, Joe Desimone, and my friend Tina, who taught me how to use Lens. Thanks all of you for being here and I'm around if people have questions.